Hello guys, in this video, I will be discussing to you the graphs of the cosine functions. So, considering the same format as what we have done in the sine function, that is the um, function of x, a sine of the, var of the angle b times x plus c e plus d, okay? A is also, I mean, A is the amplitude, 2 pi, two pi over V, B is the period, C is the phase shift, and then B is the vertical shift. So in this case, we have the cosine function. So that is the F of X equals cosine X, okay, follows the same format. A cosine of the angle B times X plus C plus D equals 1. And so we have actually this um, rectangular coordinate system this time. And I have to set this horizontal broken lines to one of the y-axis and um, negative one of the y-axis because the amplitude is just equal to one. B is equal to one, and so the period is equal to two pi. Okay. So you have this starting point. Of course, you already know how to um, how to label this um, x-axis because we are to consider the the radian measurements um, in terms of pi. Okay, so I already discussed this part here. If you have not watched the previous video about the sine function, you may watch it first before continuing to this part. Okay, or to this video. So, I think I have to I have to consider this um, point here to pi. This is our period, so which means the graph of the cosine function is now set to end in here in 2 pi so we'll start at, at the origin and then it will end up at 2 pi and whatever we come up what, what, whatever function whatever graph um will we come up that will be the graph of of the cosine function in each period or okay so or to the rest of the periods so meaning first you have to take the starting point okay unlike the sine function we are to start at the origin but here since this is cosine we have to bring it up okay at the amplitude or at the, at, at the height or the, at the maximum point of the graph okay but still aligned with the, with the origin so from the origin we bring it up we will bring it up to the uh, maximum point to the maximum uh, maximum height and the, the and the graph of the cosine function will actually start there and also on the other side from um instead of ending at 2 pi like the, the like the sine function it will actually end up at the highest point of the cosine function okay so basically the difference here is that um, we will start at the highest point or at the maximum point instead of starting at the midline okay because remember in the cosine in the sine function we will start at the midline moving up and then crossing the midline and then dropping to the lowest point and then going back to the midline but here we will, we will not start at, at the midline we will start at the maximum um, height and then it drops to the midline and then to the lowest point basically actually the graph looks like this one okay so meaning we we let the graph drops or actually we, we pass through the midline first and then dropping to the lowest point and then back, going back to the midline, and then lastly, we have this highest point aligned with 2 pi. So, again, in the cosine function, we don't start at the origin, instead, we start at the highest point, but still aligned at the origin. The okay, same way, we will not end up at, at the period 2 pi, but we will end up at the highest point, but still aligned at 2 pi. So, this image of the graph will be repeated because actually the value of c is 0. So there's no phase shift and the value of d is zero also, so there's no vertical shift. All you have to do is to reproduce that um, that image of the graph. Okay, to the next period. So from two pi to four pi is another period, and so we have another another graph the same as what we have a while ago. Same way on the negative side of the x-axis until at the last part. So until negative four pi. So as I said, all you have to do is to get the graph of the first period and then just repeat the or just reproduce that image of the graph in the first period to the next periods of our of our um our graph. So again, just don't forget to 
put the um, lines I mean the arrowheads. Now let's try to compare the graph of the sine function and the cosine function. So actually this green function here is the graph of the function um, sine x. So notice that they actually have the same graph except that they started in different um, positions. So, so like the sine function starts at the origin crossing the midline once and then and then dropping the the point I mean the graph and then going back to the period. But here in the cosine function, the blue graph starts at the maximum point and then dropping the, the curve to the midline and at the lowest point. Well, the pattern actually is the same. If we start in here, okay, this part here of the of the blue graph, what if we started here at the blue graph, moving up, dropping, and then going back? So it's exactly the same as a sine function. Okay, because actually the graph of the cosine function is just the graph of the of the shifted sine function. So it's being shifted pi over two units. Okay, so it's approximately one point fifty seven. So instead of starting at the origin of the sine function, we actually start. Actually, you can choose at the right or the left. You can you can actually start here and then and then um. I mean, not this one, not this one here, but actually this one here on the left. So you can choose to start there, this part, not this part, actually, not this part, okay? Because it it actually drops before it goes up. It needs to be like this one, so it goes up first, meaning we can choose this part here on the, on the left side, or it could be this part here on the right side, okay? So it's, it's going up and then down and then it goes back. So meaning it's exactly the same as the sine function. So again, just remember that the graph of the cosine function is the shifted graph of the sine function. Okay? So most of the applications, they are using the sine function instead of using the cosine function because they have the same characteristics in a way. And then, anyway, I don't forget that, they, that, that the functions are, are not the same. Just the graph, um, the model of the graph are, 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 are similar. Instead that they dis distorted in different points, okay, but the functions are really not the same, okay. So what if we have this function um, f of x equals two cosine of the angle four times x minus three as two, so equals two this time. So we have to set this on broken lines, align with two of the y-axis and negative two of the y-axis. So again, we start at the highest point of the graph. We will, not, we will not start at the origin. And then the period actually is 2 pi over b, right? So we have b equals 4 in this case. And so we have pi over 2 as our um, pi over 2 as our um, period, which means, uh, sorry, we have still c, the value of c is negative 3 and b equals positive 2. So from this point here actually this this point is pi over 2 which is at the middle of the origin in pi so this will be our period okay this part here is our period but then again we will not end up exactly at the period instead we will end up at the highest point aligned with the period because this is a cosine function this is not a sine function okay so it goes up this will be our our end point on the first period only just the first period so this is the uh, midpoint between the starting point and, and the period. And then again, it will not cross that point. Instead, you drop it down. Okay. So the starting point, if, if you may see the pattern, the starting point and the end point, you, you, you bring them up. Okay. And then this midpoint, instead of, if it is a sine function, it crosses there. But here, it, it is cosine. It does not cross exactly at the midpoint of our um, midline instead i mean midpoint between the starting point and the end point instead it drops it is the dropping the dropping point actually which means we have this graph of the of the cosine function this time okay so it ends exactly at the highest point of the graph and so the same way since this is um, shifting of graph shifting of the cosine function the same way as we do with on the sine function, we consider the horizontal shift and the vertical shift. Our C value is negative 3 here. That means we are to move 3 units going right. So from this position of the graph a while ago, 
Okay, I brought it there aligned with three of the x-axis. So from the starting point, the starting point now, this part here is already here. Aligned with three of the x-axis. Because again, the value of c is negative three. And when the value of c is negative, I have to move right. Okay. And then going up, that's two units. Why two units? Because the value of d is positive two. So if d is positive, we go up. Meaning from the um, previous position here, aligned with three of the of the x-axis, we bring it up two units aligned with four of the y-axis. So this is the new position of the graph. And then we have to move this uh, broken lines here now. So it's already aligned with four and exactly overlapping at the x-axis. Okay. And this remove um, unnecessary points. And so we also have this midline. Okay, this is our new midline. It is now aligned with two of the aligned with two of the y-axis. So we can just, if you want, you can you can actually get the points or the highest points and the lowest points of the graph for you to have a, a more accurate accurate results. So this is actually three point eight. How did, how did I know that? This graph, I mean this point here a while ago was aligned with this midpoint. Okay. This is the period, pi over 2 is the period, this, this, this is the origin. This um, lowest point is actually aligned at the midpoint of the starting point and the, end, and the end point, which is basically pi over 4. And pi over 4 is approximately 0 0.8. And so since we move the unit going right or horizontally, then it means we have to add 3 units. Okay? So from 0 0.8 plus 3, approximately okay this is only an approximate we only consider the approximate value so from 0 0.8 approximately plus 3 you have 3.8 um, approximate approximate result if you want then to get the next lowest point you must consider that there's only one lowest point in every period of this graph so the next lowest point will be at the next period so how do you do that the period is actually pi over 2. So all you have to do is from this 3.8, just add just add one period, and that is pi over 2. So 3.8 plus pi over 2, that's actually approximately 5.4. So you can just approximate that location and and um, trace a point, okay, or put a point. Next would be around 6.9, the same way from 5.4, we just add around, um, we just add pi over 2 or period. So every time you you get the next point, okay, just add period because the graph will actually go back to, to the same position in every period. So you have 8.5 this time. And then on top, this part here, this is actually aligned with what? This is aligned with 4.6. Why? Because supposedly before we shifted, this is, uh, this is aligned with pi over 2 because this is the last point, right? This this is the starting point. This was aligned with, with the origin a while ago before the shifting. This is our pi over 2. This is the period. So this point basically before the shifting is aligned with pi over 2. So since we shifted horizontally 3 units, then that should be pi over 2 plus 3. Okay, so that's, al that's around 4.6. Actually, it's around 4.57. Just, just run it after the 2 the nearest tenths, that's around 4.6. Okay, next. So to get the next point, just again, add the period. So from 4.6, just add pi over 2, that's now around 6.14. And the next point will be around 7.71, and then you can just start drawing the graph. So the, um, the advantage of getting the lowest points and the highest points is you will now have you will now have more points in the graph, and so you will you will be able to graph um, the function more accurately. Okay, so that's um that's the arrowhead of the graph. Then on the other side, remember guys, this point here is from zero before the shifting, or from the origin. So align with the origin here, this point, then plus three because we go right. Okay, so if it's plus three, then then it is already aligned with three of the x-axis. So that's the, that's the point, um, or that's the alignment of the first point in the new position of the graph. 
now identifying identifying the dropping of this point of this graph it drops here so what will be the point that point is around 2.2 so from 3.8 from 3.8 we subtract i over 2 moving to this location this is now 2.2 and then on on top that's 3 minus pi over 2 because this is um 3 here align with 3 2.2 is, is at the lowest point so from 3.8 minus pi over 2 3 here is minus pi over 2 it will give you around 1.4 okay so basically the point is now aligned approximately 1.4 of um of the x-axis Okay, the lowest point you have around 0 0.6 so from 2.2 minus pi over 2 again so this is 0 0.6 approximately on top 1.4 minus pi over 2 so that's approximately negative 0 0.1 okay it drops and then the same way so it's 0 0.9 just continue doing it and then you may trace the graph so this is now the graph of the cosine function so that's how we do the shifting of the graph as well so notice that the, the shifting the shifting um the shifting rules in both sine cosine sine function and cosine function are just the same we only need to trace the first period or the graph of the first period and then just do the shifting if, if the shifting is is necessary and then after that just try to reproduce okay so that is that's it for the cosine function goodbye